Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Medieval. Now I'm back at the menu screen just because I want to show you <laughs> what it's like when you load a game. Just for the sake of being complete. I'll only do this the one time though. So last time we completed the graveyard stage. And now we're going to move on to Cemetery Hill, which is going to be another very short stage. So, even from the shackles of death, my old enemy pursues me. You're too late, Fortescue. Already my army has risen from the grave. You will never leave this necropolis. <laughs> Something about his voice and the way he laughs, I always thought it was funny. So, in this stage... Some obstructions can be smashed down with clubs and certain other weapons. Try experimenting. We're going to be getting that. We're going to be getting the club uh, here in the stage, which unfortunately is going to be become obsolete very quickly, except for one small function of it. But it's actually kind of a good thing, which we'll get to in a bit. This is also the first time you see one of these kind of chests. This one with skull and the crossbones on it. And if you hit it, you see this blue spark ball creates this big shock wave and it can kill weaker enemies like the zombies and stuff and you can see that it actually has knockback um, it doesn't damage you but it does knock you back so be aware of that I can't remember if there's any stage later on where it's near ledges and stuff so you might want to be careful got an energy vial here 75 health another merchant we can buy from and I don't think I mentioned this the last time I used to be very anal about having a perfect quantity. If I haven't used up the item, I want it to be perfect 250, perfect 200. I would literally buy three more just for 80 gold, just so I can have it maxed out at all times whenever I'm not using it. Now, I, I just don't care. It, it really does not matter. Um, fire. Actually damages you, so be careful about that. Um, I want to go up to the right in just a sec here. This here, you can pretty much see, it's pretty much just like a Donkey Kong clone. <laughs> it's got, instead of barrels, it's got the boulders, and it even has uh, the little shortcut walkways we can go up. And these headless guys come charging at you. And here we have the club. The club's a crude but effective weapon. Bash with it. Burn with it. But beware, one bash too many, and it will break. So it's another weapon that actually has durability, which is part of the reason why you'll outgrow it. Um, sometimes, I'm not sure exactly how much percentage it takes per smash. I've seen it take one, I've seen it take three, it just, I don't know, maybe depends on what you're smashing, but you can see it's pretty powerful for sure, especially against just these, uh, weak zombies, you can just one-hit them. But, uh, because of the percentage, you don't want to, you don't want to use it up too much, really, at least not until we get a better weapon later. Of great archaeological interest, destroy the boulder and plunder the valuable treasures within. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's pretty much what you need the club for. It's just for breaking boulders and stuff. <laughs> ah, fresh air. We hate these dark old caves and their filthy stench of old witches. A coven of the warty old hags lived here once. Unholy fires burning all night while they brewed up unspeakable muck in their cauldrons. They moved on years back. But the smell still makes our eyes sting. Doesn't really seem to like the witches, but honestly, if I recall, there are two in the game, and they end up helping you, so I'm actually cool with the witches, so screw this guy. Actually, here, let's let's get lazy. And pretty much just you can see the little uh the little green cursor thing goes flying to where you're locking onto. So it's got auto aim once you get close enough. So we can just be lazy and just shoot him from a distance here break on through. This stage is pretty much just teaching you all the mechanics of the club. That's really the purpose of it. A guide to covens for witches and witchcraft enthusiasts. A witch's coven would teach would reach the height of its power only when all of their sacred flames were alight. Witches have been known to offer help to the quester to the questing adventurer, yet they are reclusive people and have to be summoned by the aid of mystic charms or talismans. 
Let it be known that help from a witch is rarely given freely, and the witch will more often than not make a request of the adventurer before any such help is given. If seeking to summon a witch, remember that they are quite territorial. Any signs of, of previous witch activity in an area is good indication that a witch can be called upon. Well, there isn't one here, but there will be later on. Now this here, the other functionality of the club is if you hold square, you stick it out. You can't do any damage with it during, doing that as far as I know. What you can do is catch it on fire, and actually I think I realized why I could never catch it on fire properly. I think I'm just supposed to walk up to that rather than stick it out, but anyways, I can use that to now light this, which triggers all the doors to open, and now I'm going to be lazy with my rapid fire and ricocheting off the walls. I should probably save some of these, actually. I, I will need a few later. So now we can collect all the goodies. We get some gold, get the chalice, get some health back. Get another copper shield. They give you a bunch of copper shields, even though I pretty much never really use it. At least the copper one. Here we get the witch talisman. And it goes into our inventory. And so does the, the chalice. Oh, see, there you go. Chalice of souls. That is why I was calling it that. Um, but we can't use it here. It doesn't let us. But there will be a time later where that will be apparent that we need to use it. Well, I guess technically we don't need to use it, but we definitely will want to. And we're actually going to be pretty much done with the stage here. Like I said, it's very short. I do want to show off one thing though here. This is pretty much what happens when you fall into lava, off a ledge, or even just into water. As long as you have a life bottle, it will bring you back to life. Whether the bottle is full or even just partially full, it's enough to bring you back. It's like a fairy in Zelda or whatever. You want to make sure you have at least a bottle filled with something at all times. Now here, as long as you stay along the walls, for the most part, you won't get hit. You can kind of just jump over them to be kind of safe. You can see that there's chests along the way. They pretty much just have a bunch of copper shields, so you're supposed to just shield your way through if you really need to. But honestly, with the shortcuts, it's not necessary. I just pretty much skip them all. There's like one or two things of gold as well, just regular small piles. I don't even care. Well, there I got hit, but normally I wouldn't be if I was just rushing through. I like that when they fail, they just give their lives. Well, you could just try to fight me in other ways, but they just, they just self-destruct, so whatever works. The adventure will be wise to be thorough in the exploration of an area. Hidden locations reap great rewards. Not too many hidden areas in the first couple of stages, but there will be plenty more later on. And here's another healing well. So I'm actually going to take this time. That's why I was okay to just jump in the lava, because I knew it could fill up. And I think I didn't mention this before. A major thing between Medieval 1 and 2, because there's a second one for the PlayStation, which I do own and I have beaten. But one thing I didn't like is, I recall it being harder, and one of the main things is that, I said before, if you go back through a stage again here, you replay it, the fountains are back, so you can refill your health. If I recall correctly in 2, the fountains don't refill. So as far as I, re I remember, there's no way to get health back continuously. So if you just lose all of your health and you go into the next stage with no way to refill, you can be kind of screwed. But again, that's just what I remember. I'd really have to play it again to be kind of thorough about that. But anyways, we get to go to the Hall of Heroes again. Back from the battle so soon? It must think it is a hero by now. But only a true hero is worthy of a place in the Hall of Heroes. See the ghostly statue of your fraudster self? When it has turned solid, a true hero you will be. So like he said, this is one of the things that I held off on showing initially, because now it's more relevant. You can see over here, here's our statue, and it's very ghostly. We can't even stand in its place. We don't even have a symbol, not that we would be able to get anything from ourselves. So once you get all chalices, which again, I believe there are 20, 20 stages, 20 chalices, um, that will be complete. This guy we can't do anything with right now. Uh, we'll check that out later. Right now, we get to go back to Kenny Tim. Hurrah! I knew it would take more than the army of the evil dead to throw your strides at. I have something that may help you on your quest, Captain. I give it to you freely, though I have no idea what it is. And when you accept it, I really don't know how you could not know what it is. It's in the description. It's a life bottle. But anyways, I really like Kenny Tim. 
Partly because he, uh, he's kind of kissing some ass, but you know what? Uh, I'm cool with that. Better than some of the other guys and these other gargle statues that are just giving me shit half the time. Now, that's going to be about it, but before I cut this, I do want to go back to Dan's Crypt really quick. So that wall from before, we can bust through it now. I'm going to save, though. We can bust through with the club, because there's a goodie behind it that we definitely want to get now. So let's replay this stage again real quick. It just starts us right off in front of the uh, the gate that we started originally. So I'm just going to quickly grab this because I have to. And since I'm here, I might as well grab some free cash. I could get another uh, copper shield, but I don't care. We will qu quickly outgrow it, even though I pretty much never use it. I do use the other shields later on sometimes. But, uh, the copper one I just don't give a crap about. Whoa, <laughs> we can actually kind of see inside. Come on, do it again. Well, you can kind of see what's there. Anyways. Uh, four bashes, and we have a life bottle and two, uh, chests of gold. The gold's nice, but I really want the life bottle. Also, we get some more throwing daggers. That's also another reason why I didn't buy any more, because I knew I was going to just be back here and get another free 50. Even though they're very inexpensive. And that's going to be pretty much it. Next stage gets a little more interesting, and as, as it goes along, the, the stages will get much more interesting, much more expansive, and that's going to what I'm going to have to really be kind of careful and make sure I don't get lost. So next time, we will continue off with the Hilltop Mausoleum, where we will have our first boss fight. So I'll see you then.